Hey, data scientists, data engineers, Pythonistas, people who want to become more fluent in Python. This is a series on Fluent Python, the amazing book by Luciano Romalo. We are going to go through chapter two right now, the first part of chapter two, list comprehensions. Stick around, let's dive into it. All right, here I am getting into my IPython terminal. I am on Python 363. So in this chapter, the first part of this chapter, uh, we are going to talk about list comprehensions. If you are a person who uses Python regularly, then you probably regularly use list comprehensions. But why, why do you use list comprehensions? Why wouldn't you use some of the other methods that are available to create lists? There, there are a few different ways to create a list in Python. So why go through the trouble of, of using a list comprehension? And when shouldn't you use a list comprehension? So let's say I have these symbols and I want to make a list of the ordinal values, the numerical values of these symbols. What I could do is for uh, symbol, symbol in symbols, I can append, oh, hold on, I need, <clears throat> Hold on, I need to instantiate it in the empty list first for this to work. But for symbol in symbols, what I need to do is append to codes, codes.append, the ordinal value of the symbol. Okay, so now I have in this codes list, I've created a list uh, in this for loop of all of the ordinal values here. So this is a perfectly reasonable use um, use case for for loops for creating a list. It's a perfectly fine way to do it. But uh, with a list comprehension, this is the perfect case uh, for using one. Or s for s in symbols. Right now, uh, with that, you have just a one liner instead of first declaring the empty list codes and then for symbol in symbols codes that appends uh, the ordinal value of symbol what are the benefits there of the list comprehension which is which is right here well one it's it's one line of code instead of three so we cut down the lines of code from three uh, to one that by itself isn't really a compelling reason for why we should do it um, one of the main reasons why, though, is that the list comprehension is very explicit. We are creating a list. Here in this for loop, what we can do is for symbol and symbols, we could do a few other things. We could do codes dot append. So ord. Um, well, what we could do is create a, um, you know, let's call it the num which is the ord of symbol. And then we could inadvertently add one to that. And then we could do codes.append num. So we've done another thing in, uh, in creating that list. And so what also happened with this, with this for loop is I didn't re-instantiate the empty list. And so I inadvertently appended to the existing codes list. That wouldn't have happened if I had done the list comprehension, which creates a new list each time. <clears throat> okay, so there are two ways uh, for creating a list. The first one, uh, the for loop, perfectly reasonable means of creating a list, but uh, it's all it's more lines of code and you can do something inadvertent uh, in that for loop you can achieve other goals which maybe sometimes you need to do and sometimes for loops uh, list comprehension gets unwieldy if they're more than two lines and so you want to break those apart let's say uh, let's say I want all the codes above 40 so I could achieve that with the list comprehension to say or s for s and symbols if ord s is greater than 40. Okay, so now I have codes. I can achieve the same thing with a uh, by using map and filter. Um, 
which which is a, bit, a little bit more obscure. I don't see it as much, but um, in some instances, Map and Filter is is actually the right tool to use. So let's try to use it to create a list. So list filter uh, lambda. Now you could do lambda x, where x is greater than forty, uh, and here you're going to map the uh, ordinal value to symbols. Okay, and then you've achieved the same end. Um, so if you don't cast this as a list, what you get is a filter object that is waiting, uh, waiting to be cast as something. Just want to show you that. So there are other use cases for map and filter. You can create a list, but it's another it's another sort of obscure way of doing that. So this first part of chapter two is about map and filter. I have uh, this code that I documented during this tutorial written up, and I'll post that into the, uh, the YouTube channel so that you can download it and take a look at it. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll come back soon with another video on the next part of chapter two of Luciano Romalo's fantastic book, Fluent Python. Thanks for, thanks for watching.